uh, the Comey testimony, I think many market participants uh, felt that this could be a metals friendly type of uh, event. And uh, so we had to get the uh, we had to get the uh, launch pad warm, warm, warmed up to uh, to dispel any any notions that there'd be a, there'd be a rally in the metals. And uh, uh, so they had to they had to get their good butt kicking, uh, uh, go, you know, good and early in front of the uh, Comey testimony today, because uh, we would we wouldn't want we wouldn't want to see the metals. Uh, move up significantly from uh, criti critical uh, chart levels that they've just attained. Uh, I, I believe it's gold and silver have both just recently broken through their 200-week moving averages to the upside, which is a uh, a bullish a bullish uh, 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 sentiment uh, indicator for people who are momentum traders. Uh, not that I uh, believe in all that stuff. I, I don't believe technical analysis works in a rigged market, and the metals markets are rigged beyond belief. And uh, uh, so these these uh, uh, these these technical analysis uh, points in, in in some regard, or at least to me, uh, shouldn't mean as much as they do. But they still do mean a lot to hedge funds and momentum players and uh, let's just say hot money. Like the kind of hot money that's been buying the uh, uh, cryptocurrencies in, in, in recent weeks. And Rob, I almost think that they do still mean a lot, but maybe not in the same way as traditionally. Um, it's almost that you can take a look at the charts and have an idea when they're going to unleash the next raid, the cartel that is, because you can see what the chart's painting and they're not going to want to see that. Well, I mean, listen. We we know we know that any time any time gold rallies, if 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 any of your listeners happen to follow the work uh, of Bill Murphy at the Metropole Cafe, there's a there's a a, a, a very frequent uh, contributor to Bill Murphy's daily commentary in his Midas column. His name is James McShirley, and James McShirley is a uh, uh, he's a veteran. Uh, futures trader on the uh, on the commodities exchanges, and his his real forte, I believe, is trading lumber. But he's he's done analysis of uh, the way the gold market is controlled through algorithmic trading, and how all gold rallies, or let's just say 98 or 99 percent of all gold rallies, are all capped exactly at a one percent increase from the day before. And if, if the market surges uh, after an economic uh, release at 8.30 or 9 o'clock in the morning, the market surges ahead, uh, uh, you know, 1.3% or I guess in gold's case up 12 or 13 bucks, uh, he, he generally says you can pretty much turn your computer off because that's it for the day. And he's, it's, it's unbelievable how correct uh, his, his analysis is of the surreptitious nature in which the COMEX futures are, are suppressed, rigged, uh, and, uh, you know, you, you can't be this right this many times uh, unless the market is absolutely and utterly rigged, uh, the way we say. So I guess in answer to your question, uh, a $4 billion uh, uh, shellacking today is to take the steam out of any uh, perceived bullish tone that the that the price riggers felt might have been coming into the market today. Uh, they just wanted to make sure that it was, uh, uh, let's just say, the starch taken out of the bullishness uh, to make sure that uh, metals don't get ahead of themselves. And the other thing we've also seen, uh, particularly in silver, is uh, even with silver at a pathetically low price, the the uh, outstanding uh, contracts uh, from a COMEX perspective, the open interest is basically at an historical high. And, and to see open interest in the uh, silver futures contracts at such an historic high with 
um, with with a low price is not something you would generally expect to see. Typically, typically open interest expands and and reaches a climax uh, after a major price run up, and uh, uh, when a, when a market's starting to turn. But I mean, the silver market's been in the doldrums now, uh, basically since the oh the uh, Sunday Sunday evening massacre uh, back in 2011, in May of 2011, when the uh, cartel went into action and dropped the price of silver from 49 to 42 dollars in about I don't know five minutes on, on a Sunday evening with with literally. Uh, with literally nobody and and very very few tradable markets uh, for silver being open, and uh, and and it's been a downward ride in silver in price anyway ever since then, and uh, uh, silver is referred to by a lot of people as the the cartels or the I'm going to say the financial elites. Uh, silver is viewed as kryptonite because it it's. Silver and gold do stand as alternatives to the world's fiat money regime, and when gold or silver or both uh, have rapid price rises, it's it, it stands as a failing grade to the people who manage our fiat money in the world, and uh, uh, central bankers and the U.S. Treasury certainly don't like it. When something's making the almighty U.S. dollar not look like the preferred uh, uh, store of value uh, in the world, because yeah. the U.S. Treasury and the central banking community have this uh, burgeoning U.S. bond edifice that they must protect the, the perception of value. Uh, uh, that the world has, and and the and the liquidity uh, for this enormous amount of uh, uh, paper wealth that they've uh, put into the marketplace. So, anyway, it's 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 quite a it's quite a calamity of. Uh, I mean, I, I refer to our whole capital capital market structure. Uh, and the Exchange Stabilization Fund, which is a, a secret of uh, uh, offshoot of the U.S. Treasury, uh, which isn't talked about much by respected people in the mainstream financial press, because it's uh, uh, not to be to, it's not to be spoken about in uh, in in polite company. Uh, but I refer to it and and much of our capital markets, uh, but the Exchange Stabilization Fund in particular, as a as a capital markets crack house so where do you see the end game going uh, as far as you know where prices of precious metals are going to unfold vis-a-vis -vis the manipulation and the stresses within the financial system well the the suppression is ongoing and continues to be ongoing and ultimately when when this ends it, it, the end will be signified by people who have contracted to buy physical metal, um, and they don't. Uh, at some point, at some point in the road here, people who've contracted to buy physical metal won't get it, and and somebody at some point will make a huge stink of this, and and it will discredit the paper markets uh, to to such an extent. That they will they will literally have to shutter because there will be lawsuits involved, and uh, uh, let, let, let's let's just put it this way: three days three days after Trump's win in the presidential election last fall, the initial reaction when the when the Trump win was announced on uh, you know I believe it was a Wednesday evening. Uh, the initial reaction for gold was for the price to shoot up almost a hundred dollars when the TV stations started saying that Trump had indeed won. And within within about 45 minutes of the price being up uh, uh, hundred gold price being up a hundred dollars in the futures markets, and correspondingly the stock markets were way down. 
uh, like close to a thousand points on, in the Dow in, in the futures markets uh, on on election eve, and within three days we found out that in paper form, uh, three times global annual mine production in gold was sold in paper form. So between uh, uh, whenever the election was and to, 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 to three days later on the Friday afternoon, three times annual global mine production had been sold in paper form. And this, and this turned $100 up into about $150 down. And so let's just say the paper contracts for gold that got sold in that paper barrage is gold that does not exist, will not ever exist in a lump in one place anywhere, because it's it's absolutely insane. Because we're talking we're talking something in the magnitude of uh, ten thousand metric tons uh, worth of paper being sold in a in a three day in a three day period, and you see it's this it's this overwhelming uh, false supply being added to, you know, a market that can't get enough physical. You see, because where, where, where we verifiably know that this paper gold was sold into the market, we know that the uh, voracious buyers of physical metal, namely India, China, and Russia, and other European, or sorry, other Asian countries in particular, uh, they can't get enough physical metal. Period. Yeah, and and just to like put put that into perspective for our listeners, I mean that level of tonnage is more than the supposed tonnage of eight thousand two hundred some odd tons within Fort Knox. I mean, that's just a huge amount of gold, and then and I make that point to just stress how absurd it is to see the leverage that's in our futures markets and how yeah. how disconnected they are to the physical world of just how much gold really is around. Yeah, and and when you and when you consider the size of the ex, uh, U.S. dollar exchange positions yeah. of China, if if any if anybody actually had a thousand or two thousand metric tons of gold bullion legitimately for sale, China would buy it and probably pay a premium for it in within minutes. So but but you see the, the reality is in in the in the institutional markets it's it's very difficult to find probably any more than five metric tons worth of physical gold at any one time. Very difficult. I'm reminded and, of when the IMF were selling the 400 metric tons and India was yeah. given it as opposed to China, and China had cash bid offer. <laughs> India yeah. just took the, the warehouse receipt, and, you know, counting movement. <laughs> and and the and the real and the real issue is uh, if you if you actually have good amounts, if you actually have good amounts of uh, let's just say good delivery bars. Uh, of of uh, gold bullion, you you can and in many cases do get a premium if you know who to talk to, if you know the know the right uh, uh, purveyors of uh, precious metal, and and I'm not talking about going to the local coin store and, and uh, uh, you know buying you know buying uh, uh, a dozen uh, uh, gold eagles or you know four or five boxes of, of silver eagles I'm talking about if you're if you're uh, if you're an informed player if you happen to be a sovereign and if you happen to uh, uh, have a stash of, of physical bullion and uh, if, if the if the if the pers- if the prospective buyer, uh, doesn't believe that you're in a position where you have to sell uh, because you know it, it's very interesting in the gold market uh, when you have uh, there's endless there's endless demand for physical metal but the price that someone's willing to pay 
uh, oftentimes is dependent upon their perceptions of how desperate the seller is. And it's it's sort of like uh, uh, when when there's when there's blood in the water, the sharks will uh, swim frenetically. And when when a prospective buyer uh, believes that somebody must must have fiat money to to meet you know uh, immediate commitments, uh, they might drive a very hard bargain and offer less than they would if they felt that. Uh, you know, the uh, perceives uh, the seller was just trying to alter their asset mix. So, uh, and 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 in that and in that way, I'm trying to speak to the issue that the gold market and the precious metals markets are are, are very bifurcated. Uh, and when I say they're bifurcated, the the prices paid for metal vary. From region to region, uh, as in the raw gold trade in Africa, where you have indigenous peoples mining alluvial gold, uh, maybe through sluice boxes uh, out, of, out of rivers in, in, in different countries in Africa, tribes people, you know, doing their indigenous uh, uh, alluvial gold gathering. Um, the, the, the prices that get paid for that kind of gold, because A, it's very risky to do business in, in the heart of Africa, uh, you know, because you've got, you've got warring factions and, and, you're, and you're talking about countries that are very corrupt uh, in large part. And uh, so the prices paid for raw gold which may be in maybe in nugget form or maybe in dory form, and and dory is uh, gold that's in a bar that would be, uh, you know, a lot less than four nines pure. Uh, it might be eighty or ninety percent pure. It might be twenty two carat. Um, but in any case, the prices that get paid for that gold, like it trades at a discount to typically at a discount to the spot price. And then as, as that gold gets refined up to a uh, uh, delivery standard, which is minimum three nines pure, it, it, it adds value to the gold and like three nines pure bars that aren't hallmarked might trade at say spot. And maybe the raw gold trades at spot less 10. And then when you have it then refined up to good delivery standard, as in the standard set by the LBMA as being good delivery, which is minimum three nines pure and often four, four nines pure uh, and hallmarked with, a, with a, uh, an approved smelter uh, that's on the LBMA good delivery list then oftentimes you'll see those bars trade at a premium to spot in the in the sort of institutional market. So that that's what I mean when I say the market's bifurcated. And then mixed and then mixed in there, you have uh, gold that would sell at the retail level, and they trade at a spread typically of some spot plus something. And that spread moves uh, as per market conditions or, or in accordance with what market conditions dictate. So, you know, at, there, there are times when you can buy a gold eagle maybe at uh, uh, $30 over spot. And sometimes, but then sometimes when, when the market's very tight at, at retail, you, you might pay spot plus eighty dollars or spot plus you know two or three percent so anyway these 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 spreads move so you know not not all raw gold sells for spot less ten uh, some of it might sell at you know spot less two or three and 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 these spreads are subject to move and 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 different segments of, of the market behave differently at different times. So you're dealing with a group of spreads, uh, depending on where in the, uh, uh, I don't know, I guess you could call it maybe the value chain. 
Uh, it depends where you're operating in the value chain, and uh, uh, these prices can move because spreads do move. That's why they're called spreads. They move. I don't know if I made that clear, but... Yeah, that's, that's good. John, do you want to talk to anything about uh, what's going on with physical in response to the hit this morning? Yeah, I mean, we saw st strong demand today, but I wouldn't call it uh, crazy or phenomenal. Um, definitely a pickup in demand. Um, I mean, we've seen really strong demand for silver this week, but I think that's mainly due to 29 cent silver rounds we've been selling. So um, overall, the demand in the market's been pretty strong. Um, but uh, a tick off of the levels we saw probably the first half of May, um, certainly not anything that's going to produce a shortage um, in the near future, the next week or two. Um, I mean, personally, I'm looking for silver to get closer towards twenty dollars and uh, to gold probably be running up uh, over thirteen fifty and get a little bit of excitement in the market before we see really a re renewed um, surge of uh, demand as uh, sent sentiment recovers a little bit here. So. Really not too much of a change in the demand side and the physical markets here in the U.S. over the past week, I would say. Well, I'll tell you what. My, my view as to what is likely to happen at some point in, in, our, uh, uh, in our retail markets for precious metal, I do believe that at some point the people doing the suppression of precious metals, uh, I do believe that at some point they will find that this has not been a winning strategy and that they've, uh, they've expelled a great deal of uh, uh, scarce capital to maintaining these extremely low prices in precious metal. And uh, I do think that they're going to, at some point, realize they've basically gotten nothing for their return on, uh, you know, how much they put into it. And I think that they turn around. Uh, and and what's going to force what's going to force this change of thinking is going to be uh, a demand for physical metal that cannot be met. And once they are overwhelmed with demand that clearly cannot be met, that is when they will be forced into giving up their paper suppression uh, of price. And I do believe that at that point in time, the people formerly doing the suppressing of price will become buyers themselves. And then it's gonna be Katie bar the doors because all the horses are gonna come out of the uh, uh, burn at once and I do believe at that point in time you will see gold and silver which will become much of a cash and carry market and I do believe that you will see it trading much the way the cryptocurrencies have been trading for the last three months and I do believe that we will reach a time when silver which will be when this occurs, silver will have transformed very quickly into a cash and carry market, but I can see the price of silver going up something like, pick a number. Silver could go up 30 times in three months, and that would only be half the percentage gain of Ripple, a smaller, uh, one of the smaller, uh, but still large, uh, uh, cryptocurrencies and Ripple increased in a three month period from late February to three months later uh, Ripple was up by a factor of 60 six zero in 90 days silver can trade very similar to that once it's unshackled and gold will trade much the same except I do believe that when the metals become unshackled, silver will rise on a percentage basis quicker than gold for the simple reason that the gold-silver ratio does not reflect what nature would suggest it should be. And 
<coughs> sorry, excuse me. And, and in saying that, when, when one speaks of, a, of the gold-silver ratio, we're talking about uh, if, you take, if you take the price of gold, which is roughly around, let's just say for big round numbers, let's say the price of gold today is $1,300, and it's a little less than that actually. And if, if we take the price of silver and if we round it off and say it's $18, so if you divide, if, if you divide and I'll, I'll, I, can, I can do it right here, if you divide 1300 if you divide that by 18, you get 72.22. So that means at current prices, if we accept the prices just for a minute that I just gave, uh, 1318, that means uh, uh, you can buy, for, 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 the, for the money that it takes to acquire one ounce of gold, you can buy 72.22 ounces of silver. And that gives you the gold-silver ratio of 72.22. Well, in, in the real world, the way, the way metals are mined out of the Earth's crust, for every one ounce of gold that is mined out of the Earth's crust, roughly eight and a half ounces of silver are mined out of the Earth's crust. And that means that nature would be implying that silver is about roughly eight and change times more plentiful than gold. And that would suggest to me anyway that the probably the more natural uh, uh, <laughs> nature suggested gold silver ratio should be something like 10 to 1 as opposed to 72.2 to 1. And my feeling is that when the metals become or, or, or reach a state where they are no longer suppressed through the paper markets, the the gap or the sil gold silver ratio will narrow back into something approaching, call it ten to one. Maybe it doesn't get to ten to one. Maybe it comes into fifteen to one. But then again, maybe it overshoots and it goes to five to one. There have been times. There have been times historically when the price of gold and silver have been the same. Anyway, I just believe that the current gold-silver ratio at 72 and change to one is an anomaly and will not stand once the metals are free to trade and once they start trading on a cash and carry basis. Yeah, and that just gets back to what you were speaking about before, is silver being kryptonite to the you know, whole system because it is the huge disparity in the gold to silver ratio is a reflection of just how much suppression has been going on to push silver down as much as it, they, they've been able to achieve. But hey, you know, we're not at silver 13 and miners at this stage are having a hard time uh, getting more supply and, and many miners are operating with uh, operating losses and we have a, a deficit developing in the physical supply. I mean, the, these stresses to the, to the market are going to give at some point. And kryptonite it is. Silver is the, the Achilles heel of the cartel and I, physical supply is what will take it down. I completely share that view. As do I, and I agree, Rob. I really think it probably will overshoot when it happens. Um, I mean, just to the tremendous built-up potential energy of the suppression below uh, the true value for all these years, when it's finally released, just the sheer kinetic energy, in my opinion, I would expect it to overshoot that um, ratio. But we'll see. Um, but again, even if even if you reach that ratio. Without any increase in the price of gold, you're looking at $150 silver without any movement in the gold price. Yeah, if we if we return to something approaching what nature suggests should be the right yes. So what 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 that really means, guys, is the price of silver could move up uh, you know, six, seven times its current price uh, with gold not moving at all. And that, in my view anyway, would only put silver in terms of the gold-silver ratio where nature suggests it should be. And, it, and if silver were to move up five, six, seven times its price, current price, it wouldn't mean that silver would then be in a bubble. 
it would only mean that it's adjusted back to its historical relationship to gold. So I don't know if that's clear to the listeners, but uh, <laughs> it's it's wor- it's worthy of mention, and it's and it's uh, probably worthy uh, for anybody uh, who's considering building a silver position to maybe try to understand that concept. And, and even when we were moving up in 2011, and we were just shy of 50 bucks. I mean, back then the silver to gold, gold to silver ratio was only just under 30. I mean, it, the the range in which it has moved is is pretty astounding to see it way up in the 70s plus right now. <laughs> it's just and the, the huge open interest on comics to in fact uh, make that a reality with all of the short interest that's just dumped in the paper to absorb ongoing rising demand it's it's an untenable situation at some point they they have to back off like like bill murphy says in the very least a managed retreat so we will we'll have an interesting summer uh, we're going to have a, a political uh, you know, fiesta in washington there's going to be you know national day of protest on june on july 2nd and this whole you know, impeachment drive is only just beginning, so we'll we'll, we'll definitely uh, have plenty of reason to see precious metals move higher. But you know, as we see today, uh, there's the, the effort to to prevent gold from shooting over 1,300 before, before Comey's uh, testimony was the re- main reason why they attacked. Uh, here, here, and uh, and of course we've got the uh, we've got Britain voting, and uh, I've seen I've seen no early indications as to how the election has gone in Britain today, uh, but we've got those results pending this evening. Yeah. Before we let you go, Rob, uh, any last thoughts uh, for listeners here uh, looking out into the second half of 2017? Well. Uh, you know, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what's really caught my attention. Not that I'm a big, uh, not that I'm a big uh, pusher or supporter of cryptocurrencies, uh, but I, I certainly have uh, taken note of, of of their parabolic rise, geometric uh, rises of of many of these cryptocurrencies, and it, my view on what's occurring in crypto land. Uh, the, the cryptocurrencies are only doing what gold and silver want to do, but are being prevented from doing. And, but I do believe, uh, I think uh, uh, Andy, Andy Hoffman of uh, Miles Franklin uh, stated very, very aptly, uh, I believe it was yesterday or the day before, anyway, a recent commentary of his. It was actually in a... In a uh, I believe it was an interview we did with Greg Hunter, where he was speaking of the rise of the cryptocurrencies has basically amounted to uh, the opening of a second front uh, in, in, in honest money against the uh, uh, price rigging cartel that has had their hands all over the gold market for years. And the, the uh, degree to which the uh, cryptocurrencies have appreciated in such a very short period of time, I do believe has served as to shine light on the farcical suppression of, of the precious metals markets. And I do believe that this uh, uh, run up in the cryptocurrency prices will ultimately serve very, very likely will serve to be the undoing of the uh, people doing the rigging in the metals uh, arena, uh, because this this these cryptocurrencies are, and, and I and I have I have uh, let's just say I have I have issues with with owning uh, something virtual and, and, and in cyberspace, and I, I have I have very severe reservations about how much of my net worth I'd want to have in anything virtual or in, in uh, uh, cyberspace. And I really do believe that in the very end, physical precious metal will stand tallest of, of all stores of wealth and, and monetary assets. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's, worth, it's worth noting that the function, the function that these cryptocurrencies are performing 
because they are being viewed by the people buying them as alternatives to the dollar. And to me, the rapid rise in their values or their market caps, because these things have finite supply, they are, uh, to me, they represent dollar rejection trades. And there's quite a few of them, and the market caps are growing very, very quickly. And it, these, in my view, are people, I mean, and, and I understand there's a lot of hot money in it, but these are people who, let's just say, are willing to own something virtual as opposed to owning greenbacks. And uh, as such, it's dollar rejection. And you see, in the grand scheme of things, the, the, I guess metaphorically or, 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 or realistically, what what will break the uh, what will break the rigging in the precious metals market is when there is a sufficient amount of dollar rejection. So whether the dollar rejection is being expressed in a higher gold or silver price, or whether the dollar rejection is being expressed as a rise, parabolic rise in, in the value of cryptocurrencies, uh, it's dollar rejection all the same. And as cryptocurrencies appreciate dramatically, and as we have increasing amounts of crypto millionaires and billionaires being created out of the woodwork, I would expect that you will see a large part of these gains to be recycled back into and, in, and creating more demand for physical precious metal. So it's, it's sort of like a double-edged sword uh, in that I do believe the, on one hand, the uh, uh, monetary elites and the establishment are probably happy to, to some extent that hot money is being deflected into cryptocurrencies because I guess I guess if 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 you view it in a very narrow sense, uh, money that's flowing to cryptocurrencies right now might otherwise have flown into uh, uh, into gold or silver, uh, which is in short supply. But by creating but by creating all of this new wealth in this crypto space. Uh, you're going to see people who make big amounts of money. I, at least I do believe their first choice won't be to buy U.S. government bonds with their windfall profits. You're very likely to see a lot of them want to recycle and, and diversify and put some of their money, probably a lot of it, into physical precious metal. And that's just going to create a lot of problems for the guys trying to maintain this price suppression, probably in the very near term. Yeah, so. Really. It may very well be a very positive development for the metals, but with a time lag. Dollar rejection trade is a good way of putting in some 55 you know, billion in market capitalization across the entire crypto universe. Now, grand scheme of things, that's actually pretty small. But if it were to be half a trillion, you know, all of a sudden that's a lot of education value out in the marketplace. People will be noticing. Oh, exactly. A lot of people. Yeah. And and when you're and it wouldn't take that much actually is the other point to 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 see cryptocurrencies as an entire universe get ten times larger than what they are now because in the grand scheme of things, fifty five some odd billion is not a lot of money compared to the sloshing around uh, funds that are in the global. I mean the the, the 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 currency markets trade nearly six trillion bucks every day in notional value. Yeah, but and I would also throw this out there for consumption. If only $5 billion were to find its way into demand for physical silver, five billion, five, I don't believe there's $5 billion worth of physical silver for sale anywhere yeah. in the world right now. So that could cause a huge problem for the people doing the price suppression. Less than $5 billion bucks went into JDXJ and JNUG in the first quarter, and that blew up that ETF and their inability to get positions over 20% in a lot of the underlying companies. So, you know, I mean, the whole grand scheme of things, the precious metal space is so small, and it does move big when there's small dollar flows. Absolutely. And, I mean, as we both know, both gold and silver are giving goods, so... When they start to move up, all the excitement that you're seeing in the cryptos right now, um, 
that's going to manifest itself in the gold and silver market, I believe. And, and when that happens, it's a positive feedback cycle and it's self-fulfilling. And um, I really think the, the demand shortages on the retail market that we saw in 2015 is just a small taste of what could happen when the general public wakes up. I mean, the general public in 2015 was not participating at all. So imagine when the average Joe American starts to get interested. Yeah. Well, listen, people people often ask me how will how will we know when when uh, you know when when the precious metals are really really starting to go. Uh, to be honest with you, you'll you'll probably see lineups in the morning outside of outside of coin shops, and you know the 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 talk the talk in social circles will be about will be about metal, and uh, and how and how people need to get some, and how people just say they have to get some, and you know what i find interesting is that's that's the sort of chatter that i'm beginning to hear in some circles regarding the cryptos mm. and uh, uh, you know let, let's just see what happens and and how this uh, how this uh, uh, mania for cryptos develops uh, over the next 2 or 3 or 4 months and let's just see if 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 there's some positive feedback that comes from it back into uh, uh, circling back into the metals so i think the metals have a actually for the first time probably in a few years i i, I mean I, i've i've always felt that the metals ultimately have a bright future but but i think this develop or i take this development in the last three four months in the crypto space i take it as a very positive development potentially extremely positive development for the metals